pressure off of his teammates that did not respond well to big atmosphere against Kansas. Everybody is here. Santa's even here. The only thing we're missing, the bands and the cheerleaders. Half the building black and gold, half orange and blue. And we are underway from St. Louis. Missouri 10 and 1 in the season, only loss to the rival Kansas a Saturday ago. And the Tigers coming off of a last second win against UCF. Good cut. But the layup doesn't go for Mizzou and Ronnie the Gray the third who's inserted into the starting lineup by first year head coach Dennis Gates. And watching and watching the defense early from the line I man to man they will switch switch things. You can't miss easy buckets when you got a chance. This is a new look Illinois team. Very young. Eight and three overall. 0 and two. Already two Big Ten games under their belt. Melendez from the corner off the top of the backboard. And Nick Goddard tracks it down. Push ahead and Deboy Hodge puts it in. And the Missouri side of the building, something to cheer about early as the Tigers show a little bit of press. And Mizzou will push it when they can. Nick Honor has been the most consistent of the Missouri Tigers so far this season. They run a 2-2-1, three-quarter pressure, but not much pressure. They just want to slow down the Illini, who's a high-scoring team, get them more just a half-court offense. Matt Mayer gives it up to Clark and into the corner. This is a perimeter-oriented team for Illinois. Big time blocked by Ronnie DeGray. DeGray, not many minutes early in the season, but in their two biggest wins on the road at Wichita State and at Central Florida, Ronnie DeGray was terrific on the defensive end. So you played in this game. This is a different feel than your random college basketball game with the building being split. You feel like this game lends itself more to runs? It, it is a game of runs, and we'll hear it with the crowd. There'll be 10-0 runs, 8-0 runs, both sides, and you feel it as a player. If you can get the momentum on your side, you push it. Obviously, both these teams are talented. Historically, we've had NBA players playing on this floor. It's not a mean rivalry, but it's become one of those that is fierce enough that all players feel what this crowd is about tonight. Mizzou showing a 1-3-1 for the first time. Illini trying to figure it out. The freshman point guard, Sky Clark, works it inside. Coleman Hawkins is a pass first center. And Hawkins does not play many times, many possessions back to the basket. And Missouri forces Illinois into a shot clock violation. So Missouri's had zone defense. Start of the year, man-to-man -man defense. You did the Kansas game. They got lit up. At Central Florida, they didn't guard the ball very well. They went to the zone. They were much more effective. Brad Underwood has a feel for this rivalry. Had to teach his players a little bit about it. Sixth season as the head man of the Illini. Well, it's Kobe Brown. And one of the terrific coaches in the game today. Pushed some buttons after the Penn State loss, which riled a couple players. Didn't bother him much. Not afraid to push buttons, is he? No, he's not. Played in the old Big 8 at Kansas State. Here's Kobe Brown with the leaner. And Missouri off to a great start up 6 0. And that's what Dennis Gates wants from Kobe Brown. He is an unselfish player, too unselfish. Be aggressive on the offensive end because of his size at 6 8, 250. Make the defense stop you. Illinois, good scoring team in the Big Ten, 78 points a game, fourth best in the league, but they haven't made a shot yet. 0 for 4 to start. One of the things the zone defense does to an offense, Tom, is it gets you standing around. You're not aggressive after the basketball movement. Good offensive rebound, another chance for possession. Mm. Alana can't buy a bucket early on, and they've missed most of them from deep. 0 for 6 overall, 0 for 5 from 3. Rebound brought down by R.J. Melendez. Illinois, one of the youngest teams in college basketball, but they have a veteran transfer in Terrence Shannon Jr. who gets them on the uh, on the board for the first time. And how different that is than standing around, right? Push the ball, make a defense stop you. Terrence Shannon is good going downhill as anybody in college basketball. Now he's left-handed. Likes to go left, but watching his games this year, he'll cross over, take a right, much better than he was at Texas Tech. Yeah. One of the most prolific offenses in college basketball that gets it done by turning the other team over. Six in the country, forcing 20 turnovers a game. Aiden Shaw, freshman out of the Kansas City area, checks in. Illinois will counter with Dane Danger at the next whistle. Keep an eye on how many switches there are on Illinois when they're playing man-to-man -man defense. They're going to try to lock in Kobe Brown, see if they can get him in the post. Try to lob it to Shaw. Missouri kept it alive. Seven on the shot clock. And Shaw is the high flyer. 
Otter will fire from deep. And Matthew Meyer with the rebound, the Baylor transfer. Illinois trying to run a little bit. Meyer forces it outside. Gets another touch. Boy, surprise Hawkins didn't just turn and lay it in. He'd had guys off his feet if he'd have turned. Again, this is a jump shooting team. And the transfer from Baylor, awfully good at stroke. There's no Kofi Coburn on the floor for Illinois anymore. And Brad Underwood has drastically changed his playing style, going five out. Meanwhile, on the other side, Missouri fourth in the country points per game. Most prolific offense of the first 11 games in Mizzou history. Brown got double, fought through it, and drew the foul. And that'll be the first and Matthew Meyer. Well, the energy is certainly here. The cold weather hasn't dampened any of the excitement. Missouri up 6-5 early and excited to celebrate the holidays. Just only one fan base will celebrate with a win. Kobe Brown at the free throw line. Played in this game last year in Missouri and head coach then Conzo Martin. 13 points and seven boards. He and Ronnie DeGray, the only two returning Tigers who played in this game last year. Illinois faces just about the same in terms of returners. You know, you mentioned the holiday season. Was it not odd to see Tom Izzo get a technical <laughs> with an elf sweater on? Yeah, that was a little <laughs> odd. Not the maddest elf I've ever seen, but he was pretty fired up. Kobe Brown's got four early. Missouri pressing again. And here comes the pressure. Sometimes they use it to trap. They've got active hands. But what Dennis Gates does not want is to speed up Illinois to let them get running and get active. Because this is when they're really good. Matthew Myers got five. Illinois started 0 for 6. Illini have made their last three. Impressive Terrence Shannon at 6-6 on the ball. Nick Honor does not turn it over much to transfer from Clemson. Used to big moments. Played against North Carolina and Duke. Dane Danger, 6'9", 270-pound sophomore from Brooklyn. Park, Minnesota picks up the foul. Illinois a different team with Danger on the floor. They kind of like throw back to what they did with Coburn last year. Yeah, they can put him in the post. Uh, he's lost a lot of weight since he transferred from Baylor. He's been aggressive. Has struggled the last few ball games, but now he's been scouted. They know how he plays. But terrific inside players. Got a lot of ability. Illinois beat Alabama A&M 68 to 47. They held. Alabama A&M just 19 points in the first half, but it was a close game in the second half, and that's led to some drama around the Illinois program. Illini have made their last three, make it four straight, and that'll put Terrence Shannon Jr. at the free throw line. Yeah, this guy will give you a little drama as he pushes again. Left hand, left hand, but here's where he's gotten so much better. Puts it in his right to cross you over, then finishes with the left. Spectacular athlete, great downhill player. And as I mentioned at the open, when he was 8 of 9 from beyond 3 against UCLA, it opened everybody, uh, everybody's eyes to what kind of talent he is and can be this year for the Illini. He's a Chicago native out of Lincoln Park High School, and he was recruited by Missouri head coach Dennis Gates to come down and play for Leonard Hamilton at Florida State. They know each other well. Ended up at IMG before going out to Lubbock. Playing some of those great Texas Tech teams. Illinois on a 10 to 2 run now. And now here's a pressure from the Illini. Again, maybe not to steal, but you can see where they're hanging back. Here's Coleman Hawkins, who is a tall 6'10. Run into that press. Sean East will run the point now for Missouri. And Missouri's looking for East to be a little more aggressive than he was in that game against Kansas. This is the question mark that Missouri fan base has. How will this ball club respond after they play the high-level team like Kansas? DeAndre Golson splashes it down. Had the game winner against UCF at the buzzer. Danger. And he moves really well. Wow. Incredible footwork. Wow. Lays it in. That's powerful and quickness. He went before the double team could get to it. There's some folks around the Missouri program who thought the Tigers were kind of blinded by the spotlight in that Kansas game. Sold out at home. First time Kansas came to town in over a decade. Bill Self's team ran away with that one. How do they keep this moment from becoming too big? Uh, put it in the hands of number 24. All lead player. He's got to be aggressive and tough. Even if he misses a shot or two, he's got to continue to be the leader. Hawkins and Brown a little pushing and shoving afterwards. So, Tom, think of this. This big rivalry over the years, you always had juniors and seniors that had been at it three or four times. 
Now, Kobe Brown's used to it, but on the Illini, he's the only one. On the Illini side, uh, last year, Col Coleman Hawkins played 18 minutes. R.J. Melendez played six minutes. They've got a little taste. So Kobe Brown is the one that's got to take leadership in this type of atmosphere. Brown whistled for the foul there. He and Aiden Shaw will take his seat. Dennis Gates goes plenty deep, and so he'll rotate a few more bodies in, including Ronnie DeGray, who got the start in this one. He played in this game last year. Illinois won the Big Ten last year. They won it on the final game of the conference regular season. Denied on the wing and a Missouri takeaway. Here's Golston. Slipped it to his left and missed it. And the final tip goal. Lazy, Carter. lazy pass by Hawkins. Good steal and a good follow by Carter. Illinois is heated up after that slow start. Danger on the block. How quickly they come to double team after his first bucket. Alana had made their last five. Here's the freshman Clark. Throws it up off balance, didn't get the whistle. He's back from an ACL injury senior year of high school. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Missouri. Sean East, his first. The idea of Missouri defensively, they're not tall, but they want to disrupt you. They've got active hands, active feet. If someone's comfortable, they want to make you uncomfortable. When Danger catches it in the post, they quickly come to and make him kick it out. Good defensive play getting back. That's an easy call for the official. Sean East, as a point guard, you've got to stop around the free throw line, observe some things going on. They get it into Danger, tried, and it was thrown away. Missouri, as I mentioned earlier, six in the country, forcing 20 turnovers a game. Line, I've turned it over three times here in the first seven and a half minutes. Jade Nepps on the ball defensively, a terrific talent. Freshman out of Norfolk, Virginia. This is a young Illinois team. Challenge two off the front of the rim. That was Carter. Here's Shannon in transition. Offensive board for Illinois from Hawkins. Obviously long shots, long rebounds. There's going to be plenty in this ballgame. Missouri shoots a lot of threes himself. Shot clock at seven. With five left on it, a short three. Demoy Hodge, Missouri's leading scorer, has it in his hands. They got chipped up in the open floor by the freshman Sky Clark. Illinois hadn't scored a bucket in the last two minutes and 20 seconds, but Missouri's got cold too. 12 apiece side for that one. Where does that one rank among games you've been in person? Uh, maybe the best game I've ever been a part of, of, of calling or playing in, and I didn't play, but Missouri ended with three freshmen on the floor. You said Thames, Sutherland, and Grimm. But what's interesting about that, Kawan Garris had 31 points that night. Freshman, he missed two free throws. Yep. Two years later, he comes back. They win in overtime. He's 15 of 16 for the foul line, right? It, it's what this event does. Here's Golson in the lane. Gets turned around, and Illinois coming the other way. Terrence Shannon sure does have the ball in his hands a lot, right? And he should. Uh, he's aggressive. I, I think a little bit of fool's gold when he made all the three-pointers early. That's not necessarily his game. But his game is playing downhill and causing action for his teammates. What about Missouri's offensive style? Well, they're going to push and try to find easy openings. They've taken a lot of threes to start this season. Kobe Brown knocks in that one. That's the first they've hit tonight. Fourth in the country, 88 points a game for Dennis Gates' Mizzou squad. Finds a lot of their offense from the defensive end. Freshman point guard Jalen Epps, Jaden Epps, excuse me. Extremely talented. Good off the bounce. Can be aggressive. Can make the jump shot. Ball fake from Hawkins. Created some space. Epps off the mark. And Missouri will live if Illinois is just going to sit outside and take a lot of shots. They're one of nine beyond the three-point line. Golston looking to go one-on-one -on -one in danger. And skips it. Wide open in the corner and an air ball. Kobe Brown is there. Wow, what a yeah. half pass. No block out by Illinois, and sometimes when an air ball happens, usually an offensive player has the best chance to get him. Mizzou on a 7 nothing run right now. Illinois 1 of 10 from 3. 10 of their 16 attempts have come from deep. Keep an eye on 33, Hawkins. 
Brad Underwood said he's the trigger. They run a lot of things through him. Out top, he's not been very effective in his first half. Like a golf fans on their feet. Meyer likes to shoot it. Hawkins off one foot. Rebound was ripped away by Meyer, and it will be Illinois basketball. Top Illinois is a skilled team off the bounce and shooting the ball, but Missouri's not given them comfort level. Here's the last rebound you see by Toby Brown, an easy bounce back for a finish. This Illinois team is riding a roller coaster all season. Two top ten wins, two Big Ten losses to Penn State and Maryland, and in this game tonight, they started 0 for 6, then they got hot, now they've missed six straight again. It's been a, a theme all season long, though. Every game they've played, they have droughts, either four, five, six minutes long. And two of the best wins you'll find in college basketball, knocking off UCLA November 18th, and then Texas a couple weeks ago. Those two teams are Final Four teams. Hodge, transition three. Missouri on a 10 nothing run. Timeout, Illinois. The fast break. They did not have the opportunity to run in their lone loss of the season against Kansas, which is an elite team once again. Yeah, let's be honest. The schedule that they put together wasn't the hardest schedule. So yes. now you get into games, you only score 67 points against Kansas, 68 points against Central Florida. Well, that's more likely what you're going to have in the SEC. The question is, how does, how does this Tiger team respond from their non-eventful event against Kansas? They weren't very good that day. People talk about it. Players hear that. Coaches hear that. Noah Carter commits a foul. Missouri's going to have to figure it out because they've got Kentucky to open SEC play, followed by a road trip to Fayetteville. And here's the, the what I love that Dennis Gates and his staff have done. They go to Central Florida, and they were in their normal man-to-man -man defense like they played against Kansas. Down 10-0, they kind of went more of the 2-2-1 zone, get back in the zone, still very active in the half court with their hands, but not so much man-to-man -man defensively. Fifth turnover for Illinois. Hyde shares it. And Kelby Brown picked up the block and put it back in. Well, Brad Underwood's not going to be happy. His ally and I are getting beat running back on defense. More guys in the gold jerseys are running the floor better than the guys in the white. Poked away by Hodge. Fifth turnover in the last five minutes for Illinois. Into the corner three. Got it! Half the building on its feet. Missouri on a 15-0 run. And Illinois needs a timeout. And here's what's fun about this event. Here's the active hands, but you've got Noah Carter now and Coleman Hawkins barking at each other. This is what this event brings. What did I tell about Hobbs? He's a catch and shoot kind of guy. Missouri scored the last 15 in this game and the Tigers with 12 points off the Illinois turnovers. The foul was on Kobe Brown a moment ago. The two bigs, Brown and Shaw, each have one. So Missouri number one in the country and steals the game. Six in the country in turnovers. Those lead to buckets and sometimes easy ones. Yeah, active hands, active feet. It is a very veteran ball club by this Missouri team. The Dennis Gates got brought his Cleveland State guys, other places, but they're all older, wiser. That's why they've played so well, especially when they've been on the road. Epps kept it himself and draws a foul on Sean East. And that'll put the freshman Jay Nepps at the free throw line. He had a couple of big threes down the stretch in the win against Texas. And Illinois might be young, but Sonny, their young players have come up big in big moments. Yeah, they've been terrific when they've had to be. You think of Sky Clark running, running the show. When I watch their games in Vegas, first of all, they beat UCLA. He's got to go against Tiger Campbell, one of the best lead guards in the country. The next night out when they lost against Virginia, Kihei Clark. Now you're saying a freshman's got to go against them. That's a learning lesson. Yeah. But that's good for that guy. He knows what they're going to face in the Big Ten. He knows he's got Jay Neps who's shooting a free throw line. Only a freshman. Sky Clark a freshman. As is uh, Sincere Harris. Epps four star recruit. Knocks down both free throws. Illinois. The last six, six minutes just one for seven from the floor. 
There's a production you see from Epps and Clark in the Illinois backcourt. W. Brown guarded by Clark now. Huge size advantage. So they brought the double. Steps through and finds East. How about the patience by Kobe Brown? Double team. Didn't get rushed, didn't get hurried. Another another assist. Sub-zero temperatures outside. I, I don't think it kept anybody from coming besides the band. Yeah, what a great crowd. Loose ball taken away. And we've got a jump ball that will keep it this direction with Illinois. That hustle by Ronnie DeGray. Missouri has pulled out front thanks to a seven. They're active in a matchup zone defense. When anybody puts it on the floor, they're looking for steals. They do not quit on the ball. If the ball goes by it, they chase it down and continue to play. That leads to buckets and easy attempts on the other end. Lots of scoring, up-tempo offense, lots of sharing, nearly 20 assists a game. Meyer off the mark. He's a guy who seems to get itchy when he doesn't get a touch. Yeah, you always wonder if, if, if when you put new faces together, new players, how they feel about each other. Yeah. Right? Because now the line I got to fight and claw on the defensive end to get some stops and then offensively get some better possessions. Brown on danger shares it again, but a step on the end line from DeGray. Well, it's awful by DeGray, and what I mean by that is Harris got caught watching Kobe Brown to try to know when to help out. DeGray makes a great backdoor pass. No way he should step out of bounds again. Yeah. I mean, you've got the whole baseline to run, and you've got an easy bucket. Clark has had more turnovers and assists the last three games. Originally committed to John Calipari in Kentucky, but a knee injury had him rethink that reopen his recruitment beautiful cut the gray pulls it down it's a seven plus minute drought for illinois got to finish that play at the rim go to the rim don't get away from the defender you won't get a call and you don't make the bucket carter guarded by the freshman Sincere Harris, shot clock late, banks it in, Demoy Hodge will count it. Would you count it on the playground? Yes, sir, it's cold outside, you got to use all angles. <laughs> 22, a uh, 20 to two, Mizzou run. They don't count that in Sykeston. Meyer, wow, no whistle. Stays on his backside and he is furious he didn't get the call. Danger himself instead ends up getting the foul call. So the toughness battle at this point is being won by Mizzou. Noah Carter fighting on both sides and you know what you count it when they go in partner when it's at the bottom of the net. Matthew Meyer got three guys off their feet and is taking a look at why did I not get that call? Danger struggles at the free throw line. That's 45% on the season. Got another one coming. He's from Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Started his college career at Baylor. Was a red shirt on Drew's national championship team in 21. His dad played at Minnesota. And San Diego State played for Clem Haskins in Minnesota. His grandpa played at Northwestern, and he rattles the second one home. You watch and you think, okay, how does Illinois get disrupted? Can they do it on the defensive end? To Gray, tried to reverse it in. Danger with the rebound. Good sharing. Danger has it stripped away. Brown pushes it out front to Hodge. And Meyer picks up the foul. Chance for three for Des Moines Hodge. What momentum by Mizzou. And what I mean by that, Illinois has a chance to score if the pass is better for Danger to dump the basketball. Not that he had to come down with it. He had to come down. He gets it knocked away. Missouri goes the other end. It's a bucket. The potential for a three-point play. The last Illinois bucket came with... 14.05 on the clock. 0 for 5 cents. Extremely stagnant on the offensive end is this Illini team. Not what we've seen early in the season by then. The 
this is a veteran officiating crew. And Terry Oglesby wanted to make sure. I don't know if the clock was right or we had a question about the free throws, but Illinois will inbound trying to snap them. 0 for 9 skid from the floor. I'll tell you what, can't even get the ball in the foul. Wow, from the side. Is this Illinois' youth on display tonight? Can be. Uh, I think the guards are playing. Be state cap tonight in Starkville. Uh, you, were at, you, you were in Kentucky last night. How'd they look? Um... Good, not great, but John Calipari's teams usually get better at this time of year. Missouri denial ends up being a foul on Ronnie DeGray the third, his first. But the frustration on Brad Underwood's face is the fact that you're trying to get a play started to run. And Coleman Hawkins allows a defender to come. Yes, there was a foul. But Ronnie DeGray still got between him and the ball and knocked the ball away. Yeah. He called foul. But that's not how you get an offense start. And Brad Underwood knows that. Hawkins misses the front end. Danger gets an offensive board. First bucket since the 1405 mark for Illinois. And now Illinois shows a little bit of pressure. Tigers solve it and fire. They are not shy. Here's Nick Honor, the Clemson transfer. DeGray, he's fouled. That'll be the first on Terrence Shannon. When I watched the Illinois Penn State game, Penn State did similar things. They frustrated this Illini team because they could score the basketball. Illinois on the other end stood, and the game just kind of got away from it. Expect though the Illini to make some kind of run. Can they do it in the last five minutes of the first half? Yep. Got to get some momentum and get some energy from the crowd in Orange in this building. Gray's got another one coming. He's a Colorado native. His dad Ronnie played hoops at Colorado with Chauncey Phillips. Good friends with Eric Bieniemy. That guy knows how to call a game, huh? Yes. He's got a pretty good guy to lead the way, though. Indeed. I'm not saying I could call plays for the Chiefs, but <laughs> well, you're not saying you couldn't. <laughs> Correct. Another Missouri takeaway. Chemistry for Illinois. A little bit off. Kobe Brown, leaner. Good. Missouri playing with unbelievable confidence in the Illini knock. Here's Shannon. One and done, and they come waves, and the line I getting back slowly, not working. That's DeAndre Golston. He's got a half dozen. What a half by this Tiger squad. Shannon wanted the foul. Got the ball back. Out to Hawkins. Terry Oglesby with the whistle. And we've got a shot clock reset for guys that then the lack of movement by the Illini on their offensive end They're standing waiting and then just shooting threes uh, no movement to the rim Obviously a different type team than Brad Underwood's ever had uh, He is an offensive Guru in the past on how they run stuff how they cut double cuts pitch post etc Tonight they're gonna have to find some answers and again if they can get a little run before the half maybe that helps but right now, Missouri's dominating. This is an Illinois team, which is 301st in experience. That is fourth among Power Five teams, replacing some great players. Kofi Colbert over playing overseas in Japan. Trent Frazier's got, gone. Andre Cabello is gone. And Shannon trying to replace a lot of leadership as well knocks down the first Alfonso Plummer who just played for one year at 22 points in this game a year ago that the line I blew out this Mizzou in the second half that ended a three game Missouri win streak in the series Shannon makes them both freshman from Saginaw Ty Rogers checks into the game for Illinois 
Missouri is one of the oldest teams in college basketball, even though they're all new to these uniforms. Transfers coming with Gates from Cleveland State, a bunch of other socks, including Honor, who played in the ACC, as you mentioned earlier. Here's Shannon over Kobe Brown. Danger finds it. Wow, that great I mean, really nice hands. Great touch. Great hands, great touch. Did it with three guys surrounding him. There have been some incredible comebacks in the history of this series. Illinois trying to author another. 1988, Kenny Battle had 28 in a game that Missouri led by 18 in the first half. Illinois came back to win that one. Kobe Brown emphatically throws it home. Thomas, I love the atmosphere. The Illini fans are up for a stop. The Mizzou fans are up after the flush. Clark penetrates. Well, how quickly does Mizzou get to the shooters? Hodge fills in the corner, picks up Clark, shot clock at eight. Shannon, and a reach in on honor, I believe. Indeed, it's a second on Nick Honor. Kobe and, Brown the other way. And again, as the Illini fans were on their feet for a stop, a slip, a mix-up, you can't leave Kobe wide open. Good cut, easy finish, no weak side help. Danger's fault because he was paying attention to something going on that wasn't part of the play. So Terrence Shannon Jr., Chicago native, Said he's a big Christmas guy, favorite time of year. This is always a good gift for the winning team. It's a great gift because it's the getaway gift, right? Yeah. If you lose, you got to go sit home and think, what's coach going to do when we first get back <laughs> Christmas night? How's that first practice going to be? Shannon third in the Big Ten. Nearly 18 points a game. Been in double digits nine times this season. Just a point away from that. I was talking to Chester Frazier, the assistant coach for the Illini before the game. He was 4-0 in the game. Wow. I said 4-0. He goes, no, no, really 7. Two's grad assistant. That was here last year. <laughs> He's seven. counting them all. <laughs> they don't forget, do they? No, no. Honor cut off by Hawkins. It'll be Missouri basketball, but just six on the shot clock. You know, it's interesting when you watch both teams because there's not bigs in. Now, Danger's in, but the, he has been. He's already had his season average with 13 points in this one, coming off of a 9.5 board performance in the Saturday win against UCF. Hodge with the cut and the foul and a bucket. Think of that. Underneath out of bounds. They ran a good play, but defensively poorly covered. Beat a freshman back door, bounce pass, slayed it in. Sky Clark's garden here. Pass should never get that direction because if you're defending the guy taking it out on a beat, you, you shade that way. You make him throw to the corner to get the ball in back. Hodge came over from Cleveland State. He's from Portola, the British Virgin Islands. Missed it, got it back. Looking for an assist. And another foul on Illinois. And Hodge knows the culture that Dennis Gates wants to build. You bring in Hodge. You bring in Gomillion. Andre Golson from Milwaukee, the Horizon League, a player they played against. Dennis Gates wanted leaders. They went to Nick Honor, who they knew. They had recruited him at Florida State. He had ended up differently and ended up at Clemson, so they thought bring in his leadership to run the club. When they signed Sean East, I think Missouri fans saw, well, it's the point guard. Yeah. Best point guard in junior college. Nick Honor was the point guard from day one. And when you talk to him, you get it. You get his leadership. You understand what he's all about. Another one coming for Ronnie DeGray. Largest lead of the night for Missouri. And it's also the largest deficit Illinois has faced all season. Danger gets a touch. Missouri brought three gold jerseys around him. Of course, it's a jump ball. Tiger possession. He tried to quickly put it on the floor, but three guys, you got to kick it back and then get it back. 
We got a women's basketball doubleheader Thursday, December 29th. Delay of Boston in number one South Carolina play host at Texas A&M at seven. And Haley Frank and Mizzou take on Robin Benton, Jada Walker, and Kentucky. The Mizzou Arena both games on the SEC Network and the app. Here's Goldston. Hodge lets it fly. Boy, they're giving him wide open looks. Everybody knows he's a catch and shoot guy. The Illini scouting report said he catches and shoots, make him put it on the floor. Hawkins can't answer. Illinois one of 15 from deep. Here come numbers again. Brown threw on the brakes. And another Mizzou three. This time it's to Gray. Wow. Black and gold party in St. Louis. Shot clock at five. Shannon finds Hawkins. That is the first bucket for Coleman Hawkins in this game. Comes with under a minute to play in the half. And that ends a 10 0 Mizzou run. Even when they score, it seems difficult yeah. to find a shot. Missouri shooting 58% from the floor. Four seconds between the shot clock and the game clock. Kobe Brown doesn't waste any time. Another, go to call that one a two, but we'll look at it. Three seconds left. He just slams it home. And finally, the folks in Orange and Blue have something to crow about. But this first half, all Mizzou. Tigers halfway to 100. Impressive. Impressive second half against Texas. Yep. They're going to have to find a way to. The ball's got to move faster that it can't sit still and guys sit on a bounce because Missouri has gobbled that up. Illinois turned the ball over on 29% of its first half possessions. And the shot clock didn't start. Eagle eyed Terry Oglesby said, please get a moving. So, Tom, an observation. They took the ball out at half court. Meyer walks across the floor. Shannon pointed him in that he's in the wrong spot. Now they blew the whistle, the shot clock hadn't started. But even Brad Underwood's over there. They just drew, they drew the drew a play up. One guy was in the wrong spot, right? You've got to get it right. You've got to be set in what you want to get done. Coleman Hawkins is what they call the trigger. Out top. Melinda scoreless in the first half. Outstanding shooter. Hawkins will let it fly. In and out. And an over the back. No, it's going to be a foul on Missouri and DeAndre Goldston. Yeah, I like the aggressiveness of Terrence Shannon to go with the offensive rebound. 6'6", 215. He's a terrific athlete. He's got to be aggressive. This is not a big lineup, really, the Illini. They didn't crash the offensive glass. They must the second half. They've got to make a run early to get back in this game. Corner three, in and out. And another Missouri foul. That's going to be on honor. And it's the third on the veteran point guard. Two offensive rebounds. This is the third attempt, third possession in one possession. Yep. You can't let that happen. Dennis Gates not happy. He's going to leave Honor on the floor playing with three fouls. Most point guards, lead guards can stay out of fouling without reaching. Stay away from it. Shannon lowered his shoulder. And Illinois gets a third foul on this possession. That one will go for Shannon. And it's a third on DeAndre Goldston. Remember what we said about Shannon at Texas Tech. He was predominantly left-handed. Went left a lot. Now his game has evolved where he's a better three-point shooter. That time again, he put it with the right hand. Had just four points in the Penn State loss. Got a dozen here. He sees an all-conference in the Big Ten. Toby Brown can use the full lane, full out of out bounce line to get the ball in. That was three Mizzou fouls in a 31 second period. What about Illinois defensively tonight? Well, it's got to be great. They weren't good in the first half because they didn't get back defensively in the scouting report. Great backdoor cut. Absolutely fabulous pass. 
with the assist to Goldstein. Here's Clark. They Ryan Hodge off a double team. Every, all eyes on that. They backdoor cut right behind it. Hodge at three threes in the first half is why the defense went with him. A lot of standing. A lot of standing. Meyer with the drive. A challenge. Hawkins has it. Or had it. And Missouri with another takeaway. Eighth steal of the game for the Tigers. Nick Honor. High off the window. And it'll be Illinois basketball. Back team response. Like you've been here before. <laughs> the Kobe Brown at the free throw line. 76% on the season for the senior out of Huntsville, Alabama. Like many players his age, Kobe Brown named after Kobe Bryant. Kobe's dad was on a recruiting trip with a recruit named Ronnie Braxton to LaSalle where he met Kobe's dad, Jelly Bean Bryant, and his son, Kobe, was at a high school game that night. When Kobe Brown's dad had a chance to meet Kobe Bryant, he was talking in multiple languages to different kids on the concourse. And he said, you know, when I have a son, now if I have a son, he grows up, I'm naming him Kobe. It had little to do with basketball. Here's Nick Otter off the glass. Actually, go million. He's got four. Here's the, the two two one soft pressure just getting the clock down slow Illinois down a little bit Meyer waste no time and this is a guy that can shoot him back in It's a second make from deep for Illinois today Tough matchup against Sky Clark, the freshman, has to make Nick Honor not allow him to run the offense. He's having a hard time doing that. Missouri getting into the things they want to run. Power dribble by Kobe. Knocked out in Melendez's head. One on two. Hodge nearly threw it in the Illinois basket, trying to save it. Shooter. Oh, what a pass. Millions shares it. That's well, impressive. Got 20. A team that likes each other shares the basketball. Fourteen assists for Mizzou tonight. Yeah. Illinois has three assists. Meyer hits another. Catch and release. Terrific career in a Baylor uniform. Graduated, graduated this summer, was a late arrival to this Illinois team, but they're going to need his leadership tonight, and more importantly, probably in the Big Ten. Four years of Baylor, 21 national championship. Here's Golston, or pardon me, Vermillion. Dumps it off. An easy look inside for DeGray. These have the last three possessions have been extremely easy and good looks for Missouri. So we understand that Brad Underwood wasn't going to find another seven footer like Kofi Coburn and said, We've got to modernize the offense. Go find out. Watch a lot of NBA tape. But you certainly see where they miss a lot of leadership from that team and the defensive presence on the interior. Yeah, there's no doubt. And, and he changed defensively what he does. He was never a switch guy of man to man all the time. You get your guy, you help weak side. Now they switch a lot of things. What happens is, I think it allows, switching constantly allows a player to, to give in a little bit defensively, right? They're going to switch and switch it, yeah, and you get backdoor cut. That's not the way Brad Underwood has ever coached. Kobe Brown fires again. He's feeling it, and he's going to the line. Third on danger. This is one of the best games in Kobe Brown's Mizzou career. Nick Otter danced 
and played with the screen out top. What that did, it freed up Kobe finally to leave it. Nick Honor got him where he wanted to get it. Danger late. Brown with a release, and you said it, Tom, one of the best games he's had in a Mizzou uniform, and he has had quite a few. It's a four-point play for Kobe Brown. He's got 24. His career high came against the ranked Alabama team when he dropped 30 on him in a Mizzou upset win a couple of years ago. But given the stage and the moment and where he at, he's at in his career, he has stepped up. Third 20-point game of the season for Kobe Brown. Here's Shannon. Gets it inside. And another sloppy play by Illinois. Missouri's honor passes on it. Tom, the other part, Missouri's a tougher team today. On the floor, getting the basketball. Nick Honor, the leader of this Mizzou squad, the transfer from Clemson. I just feel like this game is so underappreciated on a national yeah. scale. It's very much yeah. a regional rivalry and the fun. And obviously here in the metro area, there'd be a lot of trash talking over the holidays. That's fine and fun. But for one night, there's not a better celebration. No, because it's the, it's the time of the year, right? People are excited to be in St. Louis. Again, the fan base is because Illinois alumni, a lot of them come to St. Louis. There are a lot of Mizzou alumni in Chicago, vice versa. So they have a nice rivalry going. My goodness. That's a two as of now for DeGray. Dennis Gates is thinking, hey, he, he just asked his assistants, which plays won't work right yeah. now? Yeah. Brad Underwood's going to find out how his guys respond. They've been out tough in this ball game. He talked about Coleman Hawkins being a tri trigger guy, top 10 in the Big Ten, better than four assists a game. He's averaging 10 points a game, but he just hasn't. Granted, they're not making shots and they're turning it over, but he hasn't been a key part of what they do in the half court. So maybe because Missouri's built like Illinois built, right? There's no power guy. So Hawkins, he can take big outside, right? They yeah. run it through him at the top. So if you're you're playing a team that has a either a power forward or a five man that have to guard him outside, it's easier. Missouri doesn't have those guys. The biggest guy they have, Kobe Brown. Well, he's a mobile four or a three guy at the next level if he gets there. So. It's a different kind of game for Hawkins, one that uh, probably it, it's not the matchup that he wanted to yeah. Loses his advantage. It's a two-point takedown in the backcourt. Trey Vermillion. Tackled Sincere Harris, the freshman out of St. Vincent St. Mary. And he likes the fact that he's got players he said that win state championship, right? In high yeah. school. So see Harris won two state titles. So Harris to the free throw line. St. Vincent, St. Mary, the home of LeBron. Yeah. Put out some pretty good players of yeah. the year. Yep. Harris won a two. It's his first bucket. His sister in college basketball, both Xavier and Texas Southern. It ends an 8 0 Missouri run. Big rebound by Noah Carter. And a Missouri turnover. So a couple turnovers the last few possessions from Missouri, last two possessions. Missouri's largest margin of victory in this series is 18 points. That came in 94. And Sonny with a Mizzou team that gets Kentucky. Another Missouri turnover. Coleman Hawkins with the slam. And Dennis Gates has got to make a move. Yeah, quick timeout because nobody's running to the basketball. They're running away from the basketball. Makes it hard to deliver. Line I. Nice to see Mariah Carey back. <laughs> 
seems to do well this time of year. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Only Santa's more, more popular right now. Here's Sean East. The three turnovers in a minute for Missouri. And make it. Oh, oh, I thought that was off East foot. As does Brad Underwood. He's going over Christmas wish list. The Red Rider BB gun, you'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> How about this? Gomillion on the feed from Brown. It was though everyone was paying attention to Coach Underwood and the official. Yep. Meyer tried to step back. Tom, Missouri has been spot on defensively. Help recover, challenge shots, pushing the other end more active than Illinois. Six straight makes from Mizzou on the Nick Connor floater. The turnover is the only thing getting in the way. And what happens when you get down, you try to do things by yourself. Doesn't help Missouri on another break. Oh my, East fires. <laughs> you dropped an oh my. <laughs> what would Norm say about that shot? Well, same thing Dennis Gates, I think, was saying to his assistant. What the heck was that? <laughs> Get a two on one break. It has been a celebration by this Missouri team. But if you're on the other side of it, you have a nightmare for the Illini. You got to find something that this group can get together on. They're getting beat off cuts. They're not helping each other offensively. A lot of things have gone wrong. And it started maybe in the Penn State game and they haven't gotten it back. I was going to ask you which was worse. One and a half points per possession. You know, you and I talked to Carlton Young, see why the lead assistant for Dennis Gates before the game. And he simply said, I want to see how our guys respond compared to how they responded in the Kansas game. Yep. I think they've got an answer. You were at the KU game in Columbia. What do you think is the difference? Well, teams, uh, Illinois is not Kansas, especially tonight. Kansas played great that night. I thought Missouri played a little shell shock of the whole situation. The noise of the crowd. The only guy I thought that played well was Nick Honor. And again, he played at Clemson. Played against Duke, played at Carolina, used yep. to the atmosphere. I thought all the other players, whether you're from Cleveland State or Northern Iowa or Milwaukee, I thought the moment was too big. But they've answered the call tonight. This is a big moment. And they've absolutely taken Illinois out of everything. Aaron Shannon's got 14. Honored to share it again, but a miss from Gomillion. Meyer somehow kept the dribble alive and then turned it over. Hodge. Wow, wow, what a block. They'll say count it. Woo. Sensational effort by Sincere Harris. Great hit ahead by Sean East. Mm. The tempo, the turnovers, what Missouri has accomplished tonight, can that work in the SEC? Well, the difference, it, it, yes, it can. The way they're playing tonight can work anywhere. The difference in some of the SEC teams will have more size. Not, not everyone. The SEC has got teams with length, yep. athleticism, and most of them have really good lead guards out front that can set a tone for tempo. But what I'm impressed with Dennis Gates is he changed defensively against Central Florida. He has changed it to where they're not simply you've got to guard your man. They are such a good help and recover team. They don't miss chances when they can help out. 
The size and the guard play that you just discussed, that, that applies to Missouri's first two conference opponents in Kentucky and Arkansas without a doubt. There's a big three from Jaden Epps, his first three of the night. Yeah, Arkansas is just uh, absolute staggering. Nick Smith's been out. Don't know how long. He's still recovering from an offseason knee issue. The Alabama team is, is really fun to watch. You've had them. I've had them once. Oh, Honor went down. I hope he's okay. Illinois the other way, and Harris with the layup. Yeah, they better check Nick Honor. That didn't look good. Illini in a 7 0 run over the last 62 seconds. 76 48 Mizzou. Have three weeks from now running the same thing we tried to run before. So get it right over and over and over and then move to the next thing. So he's kind of like good marriage advice, too. I right? <laughs> never go to bed after having an argument. There you go. Understood. Yeah. Missouri has had six runs of six nothing or better tonight, and that includes a 15 nothing run in the first half. So is that coaching philosophy relative to what happens in a game, or could it be practice? No, even practice. You don't. A lot of times you'll schedule practice, right? Ten minutes on this drill, ten minutes on that drill. Kobe Brown. What a what a night! Yeah, but but he's saying you got to get it right when you're doing it because, like I said, if you're spending the next month doing the same thing, you're way behind. And I think back, John Calipari used to always say that when he only had the one and done players, how hard it was to move to the next thing. Yeah, be a good team. He liked it when he had to finally get some veteran players. You move on and do more stuff. Season high 26 points for Kobe Brown tonight. Got to go behind his back. Epps left it short. It'll be Missouri basketball. I think sometimes, too, coaches have a hard time moving on because they can be very structured at times. I mean, well, we only had 10 it's time to move on and it becomes harder in today's world because there's a limit on how much time you can practice yeah. in the old days there was no limit and there was no clock and the dining hall might shut. so until we get this piece right let's lock in for a while don't tell me that you played for a coach who would, would never be in the gym the only thing we didn't want to hear is when he told his assistant hey tell charlie to leave the dining room open a lot longer. <laughs> the Missouri travel and turnover on Kobe Brown. for Missouri State. He was an elite scorer in college basketball, but he just hasn't been on the floor much for Missouri lately, even though he did play nine minutes against UCF. Yeah, played nine minutes uh, against Central Florida, had four assists, missed all four of his jump shots. A different kind of offensive player, probably the best offensive talent on the team. This is, uh, this is the Kobe Brown that Missouri fans would like to see. Some with it, someone with emotion. Uh, someone in an attacking mode and the coaching staff on the Mizzou sideline have got to have a big smile on their face when he does things like this. Now, could have been a foul, could have been a traveling, could have been this. But I'm saying as a Missouri person, you're looking and saying, you just want an aggressive. Yeah, tough to defend. Talked with Brad before the game, and he lamented the fact that because of roster turnover, there weren't a whole lot of players that knew what this game was about. But the one constant in college basketball is the coaches, whether it was Norm and Lou Henson, and now Brad Underwood, and he's feeling it. Like he's feeling this game. Yeah. 
He is uh, the last coach here, Conzo Martin, who had a good record in this series. Grew up in East St. Louis, Illinois. Yep. And he got it, too, what it meant. Brad Underwood gets it, what it means. It's hard to tell players. I talked about in the first half, Chester Frazier, the assistant coach for the Alina. 4-0 as a player. I read a lot of the articles for the Illinois paper about this game. He was the one trying to tell the guys what it's about. On the other end, Kobe Brown could talk to his guys about it. Here's what it's about. Here's how we have to be ready. Is getting physical and Nick Honor is getting banged up. There's Chester Frazier, second year on the staff. You know, Raw's coming to this building pretty soon. That looked like a top rope move by Terry Chan. <laughs> Are you going to Raw? <laughs> the weather is raw. Yes. Eps for three. Well, if you just want to single out one guy in the Illinois White, Terrence Shannon Jr. never stops. No, he, he's playing hard. Obviously frustrated. That's what happens when you're down by this number of points. Love how Harris plays defense for the Illini, number one, the freshman. Sits down, rear ends low. Very aggressive, disruptive. Ball was tipped by Illinois. Eight on the shot clock for Mizzou. Here's East. Deep three. Tell you what, this team defensively for the Illinois has been the best they've had on the floor. Kick to the corner. Wow. Shannon tried to finish. Instead, it's Harris. So you wonder with the five guys that Illinois has, how hard they're playing, how long they can stay. Brad Underwood's got to find a way to mix a guy in or two because this team is given all effort to try to get back in it. A big answer by Golson. His first three of the night. This group of Illini five will get a break at the next whistle and immediate timeout. Harris and his gas. And Harris is gassed also. Good pass. Epps gets it again. And Brad Underwood can't wait any longer. He'll use the timeout with seven minutes to play. 83-58 Missouri. DeAndre Golston. Uh, Missouri absolutely wanted to erase what happened against Kansas. So you're playing the 16th ranked team in the country. A team that is out of the Big Ten. A team that's picked to finish in the top two or three in the Big Ten. That's got two huge wins, UCLA and Texas. Um, Missouri's doing everything they can, regardless of all the numbers that can happen. But it gives them a little bit of validation of maybe the type of team they are. Everybody kind of dismissed the first seven or eight, nine games. Right? Yeah. And then, and then they want to see how they play against competition. This guy, number 24, Kobe Brown, he's going to be the difference if Missouri is going to be an upper-level team in SEC play. I think it's also, as it stands, a huge win for the SEC as a whole. You've got the SEC uh, Big 12 Challenge later. Missouri have Iowa State. But the SEC had some opportunities over the course of this weekend and missed on them. Alabama lost to USC. Alabama got outscored by Gonzaga, which was a really good game by both sides. Uh, Kentucky lost to UCLA. Just as a few examples. It, it was a... This has been a tough week for the SEC. And, and so, yeah, there's a validation to what your league's about when you have a game like this. Now, not a true barometer, so to speak. Missouri's playing as well as they can possibly play. Shoot 60% from the field and over 55% from the three-point line. Illinois not playing well. This is not... Now, are there some holes in, in the Illini? Are they... Have they not been very good since the Texas win? Yes, they've not been very good. How concerned should Brad Underwood and Illinois fans, I guess, because fans love to talk about this stuff, be about the Illini chemistry? Well, there's a, it's always just one game. But what you're watching, I'm watching in the front row. How do these guys get along? How do they respond when they're down? Who are the leaders on the team? Are they the two grad transfers, the two guys that can knock in shots like Matthew Meyer? Or are those guys more for their stats 
and you rely on the freshman to lead. That's really difficult to win. Myers got four threes tonight. And the difference in ball clubs is the fact that Dennis Gates built this team with older players, all very successful from winning programs. So they're all used to winning. Very unselfish. Shot clock at five. Kobe Brown with two. They'll count it. It's a 30-point night for Kobe Brown. He has matched his career high. Shot clock running down. He does not settle for a pull-up jump shot. On the bounce, one of the bigger bodies on the floor. Use that body to your advantage. What a night. Tom, sometimes your career can be defined in this kind of ball game. Yeah. I know when you talked with Dennis Gates before the season started that he was really high about what Kobe Brown could accomplish this season. Yeah. And, and I think all of us that have been around Kobe love the young man. He's as quality a person as you want. And everybody's always asked, could he just step out away from the comfort zone and be a little more unselfish as a player? Yeah. In some games he doesn't. Uh, but when you get him on a game like this one, then, then you run and, and you run with that leadership. And you hope you kind of get it consistently. That's got five. He's got a dozen. Kobe Brown in the high post is tough to handle. He sets a high screen. He can pick and pop. He can pick and go down low because he's bigger than everybody. That's going to go on Ty Rogers. It's his third. Both teams will go on break after this game tonight. Mandatory three days uh, for Division One athletes. So then. Missouri will regroup and meet Kentucky in a week and Illinois gets Bethune Cookman before they head up to Chicago to take on Northwestern. Dolson's got another one coming his way. Then they have to go to Wisconsin. On a Saturday afternoon game. By the way, the cold snap is so serious in the Midwest and up in the Midwest. Wisconsin's canceled their game tomorrow. Mm. And I know you're traveling back home to Atlanta tomorrow. Be safe. Oh, thanks. Wow. Well, how bad must it be to cancel a game in, in Wisconsin? Wisconsin? Years ago, remember when the Metrodome roof collapsed? Yes. I had a game at Minnesota that day, and I asked one of the locals, I said, how bad does it have to be to get bad in the Twin Cities? And they said, listen, everything's going to be fine, relatively speaking, here, because we know how to deal with it, unless the airport closes down. And then our phones buzzed, and he looked at me and goes, ooh, <laughs> the airport just closed down. Here's Terrence Shannon Jr. at the free throw line. You know, Tom, this uh, we we worried a little bit today about what kind of crowd would be here because of the weather. Yeah, it's fantastic. Not a, it was a sellout. Not all the seats are taken, but man, what a big crowd here in St. Louis. And our hotel is uh, loaded with the line I people. That's right. I tried to get room served. <laughs> What's going to happen? <laughs> They've taken all the food. Well, one way or another, every year at this game, beverages are consumed. And so the Illinois fans will continue that tradition post game mm. tonight. As they should. Holiday cheer. Missouri led this game by 30 at one point. Here's Golston from the corner. Why everything, everything from everybody. Yeah. Doesn't matter what button Dennis Gates has pushed tonight. It's been the right one. Meyer gets another bucket. He's got 16. 
Jackson's got such a natural ability to score. He shoots it well. He's long, lanky, quick off the dribble. Illinois had a comfortable win last year. Missouri's largest lead in this one tonight was 35. Late shot clock again. I was going to say about why not Kobe shot yeah. that up. Been that kind of night. Missouri had a tough go of it against their rivals last year. KU blasted them. Arkansas beat them by 44. Illinois won by 25. This one better. I would guess it's been a while since a Missouri player had a line like this. Not just the 31, but the eight assists, a big part of it. Aaron Shannon at the free throw line. Missouri uses the timeout here. Tigers up 22. Come in, everything's worked. They've been terrific defensively. He has to be excited about, even though he won't show it, about very stoic how well they've played defensively. Uh, we've seen all season long how they share the basketball. 67 points against Kansas, 68 against UCF, and then back towards their average of. Above their average of 88 and a half tonight. What, what, what is a fair expectation for Missouri in conference play from an out, offensive output for the, uh, uh, perspective? Well, it depends on the tempo of a game, right? Depends if their defense can set a tempo that can get turnovers and rebounds. Uh, they forced Illinois into some turnovers. Illinois became just a jump shooting team the first half. Yeah, just threes, that, and they didn't make it. They were one of eight to start off. And so when you do that, it allowed Missouri to run. And when they ran, guys got wide open, whether it was Kobe Brown, whether it was Gomillion even, who got buckets, or Hodge, who's four of eight from the three-point line. They got open for open shots in transition offense. Offensive rebound for Illinois, following the Ronnie to Gray foul. The historic night for Kobe Brown tonight. The 31 are the most for a Missouri player in the series ever. Doug Smith mm. in 1990 had 30. It's a big time block by DeGray. And Doug, uh, Doug was a pretty good player. Yeah. Two time Big Eight athlete of the year, not just basketball player. Of the year. If I'm not mistaken, Missouri lost that game where Smith had 30 because Illinois. Great shooter had a big night that night as well. Andy Kaufman hit seven threes. Did it with a bloody nose, too. Here's Honor. Scoop shot. You want to put some energy into your basketball program? Dennis Gates has done that. Yep. And tonight kind of puts the first peg in the ground of saying, hey, we're here to build a program. Impressive from start to finish. Shannon's got a 20 point night. That's 38 points over his last two games. We got 40 to 50 mile an hour wind gusts outside, and now the building, uh, the doors to the building are open. I wouldn't be surprised if it's tough to make a shot the rest of the way. Did you feel the temperature yeah. drop a little yeah. bit in here? Yeah. <laughs> got to get cool. Plus, my feet have been a little chilly. They got ice underneath us. That's five for Goldston. He's done. And Shannon back to the free throw line. And both teams will take the mandatory three days Christmas break. I'm talking to the Illini coaches today. They normally would bus home tonight, but they can't because of weather. A lot of the players would fly out of the Champaign Airport, but they'll fly out of the St. Louis Airport to go home. Missouri players are safe. Honor kicks it to the corner. Time to think for Hodge.
think Illinois is going to have a couple of tough practices when they get back. Mm -hmm. Turkey won't taste so good on Christmas Day when you're thinking about getting back to practice. They've got to right the ship. They're a good team. Two of the best wins in college basketball. Not their night tonight. East off balance and able to draw the foul. By the way, Kobe Brown with 30 points and eight is 31 and eight assists tonight. The last Tiger to put up a similar line in terms of points and assists was Clarence Gilbert in 2001 against Iowa State. Gilbert went for 43 and nine assists. Hey, he scored 43 points. How did he have time to find nine assists? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I would have said Clarence didn't have nine assists in his career. <laughs> what a night for Kobe Brown. 31 points. A new career high, the most ever for a Tiger in this series. be the fifth consecutive win for Missouri in this series against a ranked Illinois team. And the Tigers will go to 11 and 1. It's their best 12 game start since the 2011 2012 team ended up with a number two seed in the tournament in a 30 and 5 season. Illinois started cold. They were up and down, and Missouri never gave them a chance to come up for air after a 15-0 run in the first half. Yeah, from the jump, Tigers were good offensively. Uh, Illinois was not. They stood off on the offensive end. Tigers got their feet set defensively and really put a whooping on this line on team. Brad Underwood will go back to work after the holidays. Dennis Gates gives his guys a few days off.